Thank you very much. Yeah. So today I talk about this uh, fluctuation versus evolution. And so this is the menu. And so fluctuation versus evolution, fluctuation uh, by genetic change and epigenetic change and evolution of robustness and characterization of plasticity and restoration of plasticity. In some sense, theoretically speaking, it's a story about selection of dynamical systems by dynamical systems for dynamical systems. So it's a anniversary of the So, so the first, so we have some feeling that some species are faster to evolve. So it's a kind of very naive, ambiguous question. So, yeah, I like to do this type of question to make a more quantitative science by idealizing the issue. And so first, uh, these days, uh, there are lots of measurements of femtopic fluctuation. For example, this is a, a protein concentration measured by fluorescence. Uh, so for same gene, isogen, same gene bacteria. So even if they have the same gene, still there is a quite large change in protein concentration or femtopic. So the question is that, so does this kind of so fluctuation may be related to evolution or not. So that's the, this question. And so the motivation of this part is the relevance of this fluctuation to the evolution or positive role of noise. And the second motivation here is uh, evolution of robustness. And robustness is a kind of insensitivity of fitness or phenotype to systems change. So there are many ways of systems change, however. So one is due to environmental change, uh, the other is uh, some kind of due to noise during some kind of developmental process. And of course, in the evolution, uh, this is also, I guess, some change in the system by mutation. So the question here is that, is there some relationship among this robustness, or does the evolution increase this robustness or not, or something like that? And here, the motivation of this first and second are a bit related. Uh, because in some sense, so insensitivity of it means that the system does not change so much. So if it fluctuates a lot, uh, it changes more. So it has a lower robustness. So very quantitatively speaking, so we can measure this robustness in terms of fluctuation. And so we try to see the evolution of robustness uh, in terms of uh, fluctuation. So the first uh, experiment we did, this is the beginning of this type of study, is uh, six years ago. So it's a selection experiment of bacteria. So in this bacteria, uh, there is fluorescent protein. And so initially, this fluorescence was not so good, so not so high. And what we did is that to so make some mutation to this bacteria, and so there are some, so bacteria has a higher fluorescence and some are lower fluorescence, and select a higher fluorescence. But as I said already, even for the same gene bacteria, there is large fluctuation. So this is for the same gene bacteria, so in the beginning. And so we make some mutants, and this is the highest. But again, for this, uh, there is large fluctuation. So the question here is this fluctuation and this evolution speed. So evolution speed is the increase of the peak position. Is that related or not? And it looks like as the evolution progresses, this evolutionary step, this increase of the evolution, this fluorescence decreased, and also fluctuation decreased. So it seems that there is some kind of correlation between fluctuation of isogenic bacteria uh, between two and uh, this fluctuation speed. And actually, so I come from statistical physics, and this reminds me a lot of, a little bit of fluctuation response relationship in physics. And they say that in thermal equilibrium, uh, so there is some kind of so response ratio, so put some force to the system, and there is response. So for example, some change of uh, current or something like that. Uh, so this change of x uh, divided by force. But even without putting this force, there is already some fluctuation. So we can measure this variance 
of this fluctuation. And what they say is that this variance and response ratio is proportional. So that started from Einstein's paper. And of course, this is true only in thermal equilibrium or near thermal equilibrium. But we can somehow generalize this type of argument uh, by considering this distribution P of x. So x is, for example, some type. A is some kind of control parameter. And then by changing the control parameter, this distribution changes. And so by assuming some kind of Gaussian type distribution, if this variance is larger, so even so by changing the A, so this change is larger. So this response of the change of X by dividing by delta A. So this is proportional to this original variance. So if this is larger, this step is larger, it's smaller, this step is small. And so yeah, I skip this details, but anyway, starting from Gaussian distribution like form and then yeah, we can say but of course, this is a, some kind of yeah, approximate theory. And first, we need to assume that this study, this, uh, what we want to argue is that somehow this represented by distribution of P of X parameterized by parameter A. So in some sense here, X is phenotype of product as in this experiment, and A is gene, general. So both are so written by single scalar parameter. So that's a big assumption. And then also for this, uh, so some linear coupling or some Gaussian form is uh, somewhat as assumed. So we need to check this experiment. And so this is the experimental result for the previous uh, experiment by bacteria. So this is variance of this fluctuation. And actually variance multiplied by mutation. And here is the evolution speed. So increase of the fluorescence per generation. So increase of the fluorescence per generation divided by mutation. So that is delta A. Is proportional to the variance. So instead of dividing by uh, so, uh, mutation rate, we could multiply here. So the result is this red sum. So it looks like somewhat, yeah, correct. And in contrast, we put just a very naive plot. Just mutation rate uh, versus uh, evolution state. So this is a black one. So compared with this black one, red one is red. Yeah. So in this sense, so maybe, yeah, fluctuation is somewhat correlated to evolution. And to check this argument, uh, we did a little bit more on uh, some other model study. But actually, I did not have time to go into this model. But anyway, that's a, some kind of reaction network model. And so G determines the network structure. And then, so some resources are coming in, these cell grows. And here are these X are several different proteins. And the concentration here. And so what in this experiment uh, we want to do is that prepare different type of mother cells with a different reaction network. And from each parent cell, mutant cells are generated and by slightly changing the network structure. And then do this reaction dynamics and choose such cells with a higher fluorescence of some given protein. And then with this uh, numerical experiment, this evolution speed and fluctuation and for given course of evolution uh, with given mutation rate, mu, so this looks like almost proportional. So it looks like OK. But this gives a new mystery. Actually, in population genetics, there is a famous yeah, theorem uh, by Fisher. It's evolution speed but is proportional to, by, to thermotic fluctuation by genetic variation. So in this case, so genes are different. And according to the gene, gene difference, uh, this phenotypic variant so is different. So different, so gene is distributed and accordingly phenotype is distributed. And this variance is proportional to evolution speed. And this is quite natural because this change by gene is heavy and transferred to the next. But in the previous study, what we did is that phenotypic fluctuation of clone or isogenic organism so that same one, same gene, but fluctuates. And this
this fluctuation itself is not helping. Because it's not encoding in G. So, and, but in the previous segment, this and evolution speed seem to be, yeah, okay, this. So this is proportional to the evolution speed. So that means this VIP and VG uh, seems to be proportional. I use VIP here, uh, so to show that the same gene, isogenic organisms, uh, phenotype variants. And actually, in population genetics, so there are some variables VE and VG. And VG is that usually the variance due to genetic change. And VE is what they say environmental. But sometimes they say that this is uh, something all others from a gene. So in that sense, we can include VIB here to VE. But anyway, uh, mostly here VIB is due to some noise in the process. But, but anyway, we can include all of these. So it's basically some kind of terminology. So in the previous cell model, so this is model, uh, we check if this VIP and VG relationship. And for given evolutionary force, this looks like proportion. But you know, VIP is the process of the same gene bucket, so it does not depend on the mutation rate so much. But on the other hand, VG is due to genetic change. So if the mutation rate is larger, so genetic variance is large, so VG increases with the mutation rate. So by increasing the mutation rate, it increases, increases. And then it looks like there is some kind of um, maximum mutation rate around here. And beyond which evolution does not progress. And what occurs there is that, so here is the distribution of phenotype. And if you increase the mutation rate from here to here, then at least critical mutation rate it looks like almost flat. So in some sense, then we cannot choose a good one. So if in this distribution, we can select, for example, a good one. But here, we cannot yet select a good one. So this kind of, maybe we can say, error cultural uh, occurs around here. So the question is why? And actually, we have not a clear answer yet, but this, this is a rather phenomenological argument. So assume that the distribution of phenotype and genotype. So now we consider two variable distribution. Instead of a one variable distribution parameterized by another. So we have P, X, A, two variable distribution. And then assume that through the evolutionary course, this distribution keeps a single peakiness over two variables. Maybe this is a rather natural uh, assumption to have a robust evolutionary process. Then, by that, so there is some kind of condition for stability of two variable distribution. And then from that, we can derive some relationship. So for example, if we consider two variable Gaussian distribution, ten type distribution x, and mutation, mu, and genotype distribution, and some coupling here. And then by rewriting this, uh, we have for stability, we have this should be negative, and that gives some condition for the mutation rate. And from that, uh, we can derive the relationship between VG and VIP. And if the mutation rate is small, uh, we can rewrite that, uh, this relationship as Vg is roughly equal to mu divided mu max and mu max. At this point, Vg and Vip are almost equal, and Vip. So if you put mu max here, Vg is roughly Vip. And so this relationship is, so from this argument, it derived. And then if this is true, Vg and Vip are proportional. And so in that sense, so, we derive this, and then around, around, around here, and this relationship. And so far, these are consistent with the experiments. But still, there are many 
here questions again. So first, existence of this distribution assumption, is this correct or not? And also this robust evolution assumption, is this correct or not? And also in the beginning, so VIP is better to be large in this, but it's, it's a fluctuation for the same gene bacteria. So in, to have large VIP, you need some noise in the developmental process. So in some sense, this argument says that noise in gene expression dynamics or developmental process is necessary to have robust evolution. So the question is that if this argument is true or not. And then, so we put gene expression dynamics. Now we did some simulation of gene expression dynamics. So several genes are here, and these, so it's something in that kind of protein concentration. And this, if this gene is on, so this is expressed and produce some other protein. And so, and but these are usually mutually interacting. So we, it's constructed a kind of uh, network. So if this, so this affects plus and this, if this, this gene is on and this gene is expressed, then it's a plus. And if it suppresses the other, it's negative. And if it's not related, so there is no connection. So we can write down some kind of connection dynamics of this gene expression level, Xi, and mutually uh, so activate or repress uh, with uh, this matrix Jij, uh, with plus one, minus one, zero, two, yeah, according to activation, repression, or relationship, and put some noise here. And so, in this model, so it's a dynamical systems model, and we have several, so in most simulations, 64 genes, and we put some output genes, for example, in this case here, eight. And these, so as a fitness, we assume that these eight genes should be on. So if in this simulation, if eight of Xi, so if X1, X2, X3, X8 is positive, then it's fitness. And one of them is negative, it's minus one. And two of them is negative, uh, minus two. So what we did is that run this dynamics and select such cells with higher P. And again, we put some gene, uh, genetic algorithm to change that reaction, this gene expression network. So gene controls this network structure. And this expression level is a feminine. And so for example, in the simplest two case, so starting from on off genes, and then after dynamics, it goes to positive one, so two of them are expressed, and so that's it is. But if one of them goes to here, then this is minus one, and if it goes here, minus two. And so by doing this evolution experiment, so since this is not a difficult task, after a few hundred generations or something, it goes to this fittest state, that the fittest is zero. And so here, what we plot is, so that this is the top one. So actually, in this genetic algorithm, for example, I used 100 populations, 100 different networks. And so the top one is this top fitness, the network with the top fitness among these 100 populations. And this green one is the lowest. So this is the result for low noise case. So the top one goes to the high level. But there are some bad mutants, and the average is not so high. And but in the high noise case, in the same model, this evolution occurs like this. So top one and lowest one also goes to the highest level. So and actually, so the distribution of the fitness that so if the noise is larger, then it's sharply distributed around the highest. And if the noise is smaller, then it has a tail to low noise values. And so there is some transi transition at some noise level, and this average fitness goes down when the noise level is decreased. And then we checked this previous uh, relationship between VIP and VG, so this is the fluctuate variance of the same gene uh, so cells, and this is VG's so variance due to different yeah, gene network. And again, for given so evolutionary cause for given mutation rate, it decreases through the generation, and these two are proportional. 
But if the noise level is smaller, then this does not occur and it stays right here. And this line is VIP for the species. So the previous argument seems to be again true here. Then the question is why this is so. And so after measuring some kind of basic structure of this type, so that is from what initial conditions this goes to this high fitness state. And what we found is that in the network evolved in the low noise case, even for the top fitness case. So there's many, so by changing different initial conditions, it easily goes to a lower fitness state. So here, if you start from this given initial condition, it goes to the highest fitness state. So that's given, so this is selected. But if you change the initial condition, it goes to many different attracting states that has a lower fitness values. So the structure is something like that, so schematically speaking. So starting from other initial conditions, those are different uh, attractors uh, with a lower fitness. But in the case of high fitness state, we found that many initial conditions go to this high fitness state. So the structure evolved like this. So in some sense, this is a kind of panel type structure. So many initial conditions are so attractive to this high fitness state. And actually, in the case of high noise, so the dynamics try to make evolve so that some so there are, so in this, actually, in this dynamics, the dynamics are rather complicated. So that there's many turning points in the orbit. And so starting from here and goals should be here, but there are many other ways to go out. So, but there are many such dangerous points in this gene expression dynamics. And then the system tried to evolve so that these dangerous points are not closer to the does not easily touch with this dangerous points. So this is a rough argument why this kind of evolution of robustness occurs for only for high noise case. Okay, so in that sense, so, so we have seen evolution of robustness. So robustness is against noise or against parameter by mutation. And so this is, so for the same gene uh, network. So this is, VIP is related to this robustness against noise. So the same one, but if VIP is smaller, then robustness is larger. And VG is against parameter change. This is because mutation to this. And so if VG is smaller, uh, this robustness against mutation is larger. So what we have seen is that if noise is larger, this VIP and VG we both decrease, that means both robustness increase. So noise is necessary for evolution of robustness. And this type of argument is a little bit similar to Waddington's genetic assimilation. Okay, so we have seen this uh, robustness of evolution of robustness of curves. Then, what type of some characteristics of these robust dynamical systems have? And here, we have checked what happens to non-target genes. So target genes, I mean, is that so among 64, eight genes should be on. So that, that is related to fitness. But other 56 can be either on or off. So it doesn't matter. So it can change by mutation or something like that. But what we found is that after a generation, many of Xi, is, is either become fixed to positive or negative. So on or off. And some still change plus or minus. But most of them so far. So some type of this, yeah, so consolidation of other genes occur. And then, so we can check the evolution speed to each, so fixation for each gene. So now, we plot the variance of each gene expression. Now the variance, it's not the fit, variance of the fitness, but each variance of each gene, so VIP of each gene I. And then we can check the evolution speed for each gene expression. 
Now, if we plot this, it looks like, again, almost proportional. So this is different from the previous argument. It's a, for given snapshot, given generation, and taking many genes, and over genes, this proportional, proportionality between evolution speed and fluctuation seems to be true. Then that means probably we can see the relation, positive correlation or proportionality between VIP and VG for each gene expression. So we have 64 genes, and for each gene expression, we can measure the fluctuation by genetic change and by noise. And so by noise VIP and by uh, sort of mutation VG. And then, so for example, for the noise, high noise case, at given subgeneration, VIP and VG for many genes, over all genes. And so many are proportional. There are some that are big. And if the noise is smaller, then it loses a little bit robustness. And then some are proportional, but there are some other genes that are deviated from the proportionality. And if the noise is much smaller, uh, we know the threshold. Then all that can happen. So anyway, when the robust evolution of robustness occurs, that there seems to approach the uh, appear this single unique slope. So in some sense, so as this uh, robustness increases, you have this structure between VIP and VG of all genes. And then as the robustness decreases or some kind of plasticity increases or some possibility for higher time dimension, time echo change, then there are some other genes appear. And if the noise is much smaller, then all come up. So that structure seems to be common here. And then the question is why this kind of proportional relationship occurs. And maybe so much time. Okay. So anyway, so here again I did made it some kind of uh, argument of this uh, distribution function of P X A, but for all genes. And again, some kind of stability condition, and then at some mutation rate, this stability is lost. And here, if we assume that at some mutation rate, many genes lose the stability that at the same mutation rate, so kind of error, some kind of percolates, and then so all the distribution becomes uh, so flat for many genes at the same mutation rate. If we assume that, we can derive this type of relationship over all genes. And here, we should note that this relationship is not necessarily true for any kind of process. It's not true. It appears only after evolution. So here we did some experiment, numerical experiment, to increase uh, some fitness. And after this evolutionary steps, uh, this kind of proportionality. And we yeah, think that this kind of relationship is rather general, but maybe we can discuss later. And so anyway, in many cases, we are sure that VIP and VG are, pro and are proportional through evolutionary course and also over genes at given generation. And experimentally, we are not completely sure. But here is an experiment by Drosophia about Ten years ago, and so they select these drops of here so to, for some uh, trait, for, for example, like age or weight or something like that. And this is uh, so variance of within the lines, so that means VIP. And here is among lines this region, and it looks like it has a some kind of common proportionality over many traits. So this seems to be. And actually, there is a recent experiment by this group, and it's more quantitative. Uh, this, they measured 4,000 genes of yeast. And in this case, so they measured something similar to VIP and VG here. Not completely safe, but... And in this case, so there is, seems to be some correlation, but not so clear proportionality. And probably the reason for this difference is that in this case, they did selection experiment. But they, in this case, they did just uh, measure this one type. So maybe that's the cause for it. Okay, so, and now, so far in 
these studies, in this directed evolution to given or given fitness condition, fluctuations decrease and robustness increases and evolution speed also decreases. So in some sense, after some generations, evolution slows down and fluctuation goes down. But of course, in nature, as I said in the beginning, there is large fluctuation and evolution did not stop. So the question is how this evolution continues or why large fluctuations exist in the present organisms. Also, if there are some regain fluctuations and in a recent experiment, we found some kind of appearance of mutant with large fluctuations. And, but I cannot go into details of this. And in the model, what I did is that I changed the environmental condition and see what happens. So for example, so here, initially I said that eight genes should be on. So by some kind of according to some environmental change. Here I assume that these genes should be on, but these genes should be off. So the fitness condition changed, switched. And see what happens. So by this switch, so initially the fitness is very low, but then after some generation, it increases. And here I put VIP and VG of the fitness. And so after, so here, after the evolution, we start. So this is the beginning. And then both increase proportionally and then come back again. So in some sense, this proportionality law is somewhat true, not for decrease, but also for increase. And anyway, to, re to adapt to new environment, both of them increase and adapt to new environment. And so, and actually, if we measure for all genes, so all gene variants, then the distribution, so initially here, this proportionality line, but then some other appear, and this touches this instability line, and then new type of plasticity or plasticity or new type of instability increases, and then produces a new way of dynamics, and then starts to decrease, and finally, proportionality. So in some sense, so this works as a measure for biological plasticity. If this goes here, it's smaller. And to have plasticity, maybe you need something like that. And finally, so we did some experiment, numerical experiment, by changing the environmental condition so frequently. So this is switch the fitness power, for example, 20 generations between this and this one, 10 generations. And then, if the noise is very small, it again cannot adapt. Well, it cannot have a higher robustness, and the thickness is not good. But if the noise is too large again, previously it was okay to have robustness. But if, if the noise is large, then the fluctuation is so small, and they cannot adapt to the new environment. And so actually, this is a case of this green line, this okay, blue line is the case of the highest noise, large noise. So it cannot adapt to this fitness. But in the middle, just near the critical point of this noise, so the fitness goes up and goes up again. So it can adapt quite rapidly and also robust. And so the average fitness got uh, it against noise level has some peak around this transition point. Near the critical point. And so, in some sense, near this, if we plot VIP versus VG, if the noise is large, then it stays there. But if the noise is small, it, again, this is too large. But if in the middle range, so it goes up and goes down like this, near this, yeah. So probably the, in the wild type, uh, this type of structure appears because the environment is fluctuating. Okay, to sum up, so we discussed about this biological relevance of phenotypic fluctuations, and phenotypic fluctuation is proportional to evolution speed, and then we discussed uh, proportionality between isogenic phenotypic fluctuation VIP and fluctuation by mutation, which is proportional first through the evolutionary course. 
And then we check this is true, also over many genes. And then this issue is discussed in this relationship between robustness to mutation and robustness to developmental norms. And finally, regain of fluctuation and evolvability uh, is found in fluctuating environment. And in this case, optimal noise level to give criticality and to, that is relevant to adaptation. Okay, thank you very much.